Hi everyone, so this is, uh, this is not that, what's it on there? <laughs> this is the first lesson of the normal distribution pack. There's five lessons in total. Um, so we'll just do our best to get through it. It's nice actually, I like the normal distribution. The binomial distribution, the normal distribution, I really like. It's only the dodgy probability things that let us down. Right, so you remember, with binomial, it was discrete. It was success and failure. Well, the normal distribution isn't discrete. It's continuous. So it's stuff like weight and height and speed and stuff like that. So here you've got, you've got some histograms which kind of show the probabilities. The idea being that the more kind of sections you've got, the more the shape resembles what they call a bell curve, which is this one here. Uh, so if you had all the data individually done, as opposed to in clusters of like 140 to 150 or, or 140 to 145 or whatever it is, you get that shape there. Now what's important is that the graph is symmetrical. So binomial wouldn't be symmetrical or would only be symmetrical if p was a half. So this is symmetrical. So the mean, the mode, and the median all match up in the middle. Your parameters are mu, which is a population mean, and sigma squared, which is your population variance. So we say, like we have binomial, which is x follows the binomial for n comma p. This is x follows the normal for mu, comma, sigma squared. And it is ridiculously important to spot that second value as the variance and not the standard deviation. So you have to square root it. You've got to keep an eye on the time, everyone, because uh, it's a five minute base. So things that can follow a normal distribution are listed there. Yeah. Right, so depending on what you read, Within one standard deviation of the mean, so if you imagine there's a, a mean there, then that distance out is like minus one sigma, and that distance out is plus one sigma from the mean. So this is the mean plus or minus one standard deviation. Some packs will tell you it's two thirds, but our example will tell 68%. Then if I go for two standard deviations away from the mean, so there's my mean again. If I go two standard deviations, there, so we're going to check one thing, there. then it's mu plus or minus two sigmas is 95% of your values. So 95% of your data would lie between two standard deviations. And then if you go for three standard deviations, so three standard deviations away from the mean, you're looking at pretty much everything. So if you had a picture of the graph, you can roughly work out what you mean in standard deviation are. So that would be mu plus or minus three sigmas. So I could work out the limits on where my numbers really should be. There. So the same idea, class one is getting a lot boring. The same idea as uh, when we did binomial, if I do stats F5 for distribution, I've now got normal. Let's have a look and see if it's there. So if I do menu 2, F5 for distribution, and I've got F1 for normal. And I've got BPD, BCD, and inverse as well. There, so F1. There. And then NCD would be F1. And that would be for equals. Now, because this is continuous, we don't know the boundary. If I wanted x is greater than 6, I'm going to find equal to 6. I don't know what boundary it starts at. So x is greater than 5 is the same as x is greater than or equal to 6. But I just tend to stick with the 6 as my limit. It's a little bit confusing. I just pretty much just ignore it. So this one here.